talent development leader. For years, you have trusted ATD to develop your team. Now ATD is elevating its content, communities, and capabilities to develop you. Talent Development Leader is ATD's brand for your professional development, providing content that fosters and promotes your thought leadership, community that progresses with your career, and capabilities backed by ATD's capability model that keep you on the leading edge of the field. Welcome to ATD's Talent Development Leader Podcast, featuring monthly conversations with the greatest influencers in the talent development field. We cover the latest trends, hot topics, and future-focused ideas that current and aspiring TD leaders need to know. Learn more by visiting www.td.org and searching for Talent Development Leader Podcast. Today, we are talking about how to be a more inclusive leader. Joining us to share his expertise and insights on the topic is Rick Hamill. Rick is the founder of Atlas, the groundbreaking expertise-enabled technology platform he founded in 2015. With a keen eye for identifying market gaps, Rick's entrepreneurial journey began at his dining room table, where he recognized the pressing need for solutions that could empower companies to expand into new markets efficiently, rapidly, and with strict adherence to compliance standards. Driven by his dedication to streamlining global expansion, Rick pioneered the innovative direct employer of record business model specifically designed to support companies with ambitious international aspirations, while fostering equitable opportunities for businesses to compete on a global scale. Under Rick's visionary leadership, Atlas has experienced a remarkable transformation, evolving from a local startup into a renowned global tech firm, boasting an impressive network of 19 offices worldwide. This extensive reach enables Atlas to provide exceptional support to clients in over 160 countries. Last year, the Global Payroll Association bestowed the coveted title of number one employer of record provider for 2023 upon Atlas, acknowledging Rick's strategic vision and effective leadership. Rick's expertise and thought leadership extend beyond his entrepreneurial ventures. He is an accomplished author, having penned the insightful book, Getting Shit Done, The Millennial CEO. Moreover, Rick's exceptional contributions to the entrepreneurial ecosystem earned him the prestigious EY 2021 Midwest Entrepreneur of the Year Award, a testament to his indomitable entrepreneurial spirit and the profound and positive impact he has made on the communities he serves. Hi, Rick. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you on today's podcast. Thank you, Anne. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. And it's always... um humbling when you hear that description of yourself um it's been it's been a journey but it, it's it's could have done it without my team so it's an impressive description an impressive bio we're super thrilled to have you on our podcast today and today we're going to be talking about inclusive leadership so to kind of kick off our conversation i would love to help listeners get to know you a little bit better And I mentioned when introducing you that your entrepreneurial journey began at your dining room table. Can you share your own personal leadership philosophy? And what have you learned about how to be an effective leader from your career? Yeah, and I'll I'll start off by saying you're never born a CEO. Um, You're made a CEO. And that comes through trials and tribulations and a lot of learning experiences. I think the, the leader that I was when I started Atlas into the leader I am today, it's very different because I had to evolve. I had to learn Mm -hmm. what that meant. And Mm -hmm. for me, when I started, um, I was able to look at leadership from my father who owned his own business, my grandfather who owned his own business, um, and other entrepreneurs from my family, but also realizing that the generational differences between those um, those individuals and myself and how the employment market has changed had to make me evolve into a different leader that was very set for this this particular market um, mm-hmm. in that perspective. So I remember being, you know, that uh, leader when I first started, which was very rigid, very time, very what, what time are you checking in, mm-hmm. what time are you checking out, uh, to being one that's more flexible and understanding the you know work life balance. But that that was a journey. 
And it, it took me uh, a lot of time to learn how to do that. Um, and by the way, still learning every single day um, how to be a better leader from that perspective. But um, how I kind of look at leadership and philosophy today, it's um, it's got to be very collaborative. Um, it's it's not just one person dictating what needs to be done, but it's making sure that it's a it's a partnership, making sure that you're getting feedback. Now you do have to make decisions as leaders, right? You don't want to over process the process. You don't want to spin. But it's really important to get feedback from your your team. It's very important to understand where they're coming from because those are the ones that are actually in the day to day. And also, one thing that I've had to learn as well is you have to be comfortable hiring people smarter than you. Um, you don't have to be the smart, smartest person in the room. Or there's a saying that I like to say here: it's just you never want to be the biggest fish in the smallest pond. Um, you want to be somewhere that you want to grow. And so, making sure you're bringing the right team in, creating the right foundation. And, and making sure you're collaborating with them to make sure that you're all heading in the right direction, which I like to call the North Star. I love that. Um, it sounds like you've really surrounded yourself with the people to help enable your success and also have pushed yourself into situations, right, uh, to kind of get there as well uh, with your impressive resume and, and your career journey. So that's um, that's interesting to hear. I know you're in good company, our audience of talent development leaders always thinking about how to better themselves as leaders um, and and how to grow on their own journeys and also how to help enable the people in their organizations to become better leaders too. And I know we're going to be talking about that today, um, in particular about inclusive leadership. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the folks listening to our podcast, um, they care deeply about leadership. They oversee leadership development programs in their orgs. Um, and I know you've written about inclusive leadership, um, and you believe that it's super, it's truly critical to success. Um, and I think for you know for our um, for our industry, this has been a topic that has been very trendy, might I say, for for a few years now. And I'd love to get super practical with this, right? You know, can you explain why, especially in the context of today's workplace, so the 2024 workplace and talent marketplace? It is critical for leaders to be inclusive. Um, and on the flip side, what is the cost of not being an inclusive leader? Yeah, and I, I've seen this firsthand. Um, I, I talked about some of those lessons learned, right? This is one of those lessons I had to learn. Um, there's, there's two things. In the world that we live in, the hybrid or remote world that we live in, um, it's important that your employees feel like they're part of something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, employees love working from home, but statistics show that they also feel very disconnected from businesses because they're not used to sitting at a desk or talking to colleagues that are right next to them on a day-to-day -day basis and hearing directly from leadership what's going on, how are they working through that process. So what leaders have had to figure out is how do we make sure people are still part of the vision, right? How are they still part of the overall mission um, and our goals to make sure we're all set up for success? So bringing people into that conversation, bringing them to the table um, only allows that. Um, and I think that one thing that I like to do as a leader is um, I create a forum where they, we get updates to all of our employees. We like to call them coffee hours or we do our town halls or our weekly meetings. But we also make sure that those who can attend, um, that we record that so that they are aware of what's going on. And it becomes their responsibility to, be, uh, um, to, to watch those videos and to make sure they're up to date from that perspective. After we do those meetings, we actually do a forum where we, everyone can provide feedback. What are we missing? What are we doing? What can we do better? And not just for the meeting, meeting uh, for the meetings, but actually for what the business is doing. What are our or particular KPIs, our goals? Um, and it's very interesting. I, I've done that at Atlas, but also for my my newest venture that's going to launch, um, and, and later this year, we we've been able to re kind of revisit that. We've been able to look at that and say, how do we make sure that we are not just being this American company trying to do it the American way? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure we're building a global um, technology platform that we get input from everyone around the world who's part of our team? They are employees. They're our target audience. So how do we make sure they understand what we're building, but also taking their ideas and really building into that and making sure that they're, they feel part of the overall design. Um, so those little things that I've been able to do have really just expanded on, on the business and actually makes people even more um, involved. We've also worked out and say we put in our budgets where we can bring people into um, our headquarter offices as well and say, hey, um, this is not going to be an every week thing. This is going to be maybe a, twice a year, maybe three times a year. But we want to get your feedback. We want to connect you to the organization. We want to make sure that no matter where you are in the world, because we sell remote services, so we have to walk the walk and talk the talk. 
we want to make sure we bring you in and make sure that you're you feel part of that too. When you come here, this is what's going on. This is our strategy. This is how we're working. Now, what's your opinion? What can we do? And what are we missing mm -hmm. here to make sure we stay local? Local meaning global, but local. Um, okay. But making sure you're getting that feedback, making sure that you're you're connecting them to the vision, the mission, making sure you're over communicating, mm -hmm. and then making sure that they have a voice. Um, and one thing that I, I reference my grandmother a lot, if, if you read my book, and I she used to say, a "Closed mouth never gets fed." <laughs> and so I tell our staff, you need to be hungry. You need to be hungry. We need to hear your voice all the time. So making sure that they have an opportunity, not just to sit at the table, but to eat at the table is really important for us. As well. That's wonderful. I appreciate the super practical examples there too. Um, I think you know our audience is going to be able to eat that up. I'm sure they're hungry. They're hungry in their own sense for some of this. Um, and I think just uh, I love the, the word global, right? So kind of making sure that I mean, you're seeing your employees as a snapshot of, of your business, right? Of your customer base beyond the org, and hearing their voices. So that also kind of reflects or impacts what you're doing there. Um, that's huge. And then getting people together in person. I know personally, I work remotely as well. Last week, and I had the chance to get to my headquarters. And it's amazing what it does to be with the people you're on Zoom, you know, our teams with to be with them in person, um, and to have that connection. And you forget, I think, until it's until you're IRL, until you're in real life. So um, yeah, I love that idea of build, making it a priority, building it into your budget to convene people. Um, and with the intent, right, to hear their voices and, and to get their ideas. So thank you, yeah. Rick. That's really, really helpful. It's not just a party, and I think it's because uh, it's, sometimes they go, oh, we're having a holiday party and we're going to bring mm -hmm. them together. Um, and that's great. I think we should still do that. And you know, parties are always great, but employees actually want to have an impact. Mm -hmm. Um, believe it or not, some people are, some, I mean, everyone's different. Sometimes you have people that are just there for a paycheck, but there are, most people don't want to stay at an organization that they don't feel like they have a voice or they have an impact. Mm -hmm. And so bringing those individuals together, investing in that time, um, really does um, statistically show that employees stay longer. It's less um, turnover with employees because they feel like they actually have something that they're contributing to the organization, not just a nine to five. Yeah. How might listeners scale such behavior? So I know we've, we've talked about, you know, kind of individual leadership philosophy, right? How I how might I might I be a more inclusive leader? Um, but then when you look at organization wide and whether you're in charge of developing leadership development programs um, or you're training people, you know, managers to be these inclusive leaders, do you have any tips for how to scale this? Um, and or any examples from orgs that are doing it really well that you think people might might be the north star for for folks here. Yeah, it's, I, I say rinse and repeat, but also evolve from that perspective. Um, the one thing that I think that you've seen really successful are global organizations who have leadership across the globe. So um, especially U.S. based organizations where um, I, I find that kind of default to lower or maybe doesn't do it the right way is where everything's fully headquartered out of the US and everyone else is just remote employees. So the voice is always coming from one location where if you have someone that represents each other on um, themselves and they have they have opportunities there. Um, Viola Davis said it the best and she said um, you can't um, you can't achieve something if you don't see yourself in that vision. And what that means is people need representation. People need to be able to see themselves in that overall goal and strategy. We talk about this with DEI. We talk about this with gender equality, um, race equality, um, religious equality. We talk about that, that people have to see themselves to be able to be successful. So leaders who have a strong initiative to bring everyone together to have inclusive um, cultures, they have to show that also from the leadership side as well, so that someone that's representing them, if it's a language, it's a culture or a religion, someone can represent them um, at the table from a leadership perspective. That means that they, they are been thought of in that process. That's really, really powerful. Um, a second thing that I've seen done really well is where, you know, flexibility. So making sure they're setting expectations for flexibility with that as well. Um, cultures change. The second you add one new person from a different country, your culture changes because you've now added them to the equation. So having to evolve and having to be that flexible to say, okay, this is who we are, this is who we want to be, but we have to shift a little bit to that to make sure we make room for somebody um, has been really important in that perspective. So and I've seen quite a few organizations um, in the global world. Um, one of the ones that I think has done it very, very well has been L Brands. Um, another one is Fiverr. 
uh, who I've seen do really well from that perspective. I mean, we hear the names like Salesforce and Google, and they do things uh, not perfectly, but they do things really well as well from an exclusivity perspective, inclusivity perspective. But um, it's the smaller business that I look at, they're, they're starting the foundation, and they're the, always the hardest ones. And the ones that have stepped up and been able to make that happen have been the ones that have been the shining beacon in my eyes. Well, I've talked to uh, an exec, a talent development exec, who you, you mentioned kind of the culture piece and evolving as you add folks um, at employees. Um, and their organization, every time their team as a new employee, they have a new, not just onboarding for that person, but for the team, right? Because they recognize that, okay, our team has changed because we have a new individual. And I think that's a really cool idea and kind of, um, you know, kind of co-signs what you've been saying as well. Um, and when you talk a little bit about culture, I think that's an interesting concept too. Um, you know, as, as far as inclusive leadership, is this something that, you know, there has to be buy-in from the top, that it has to be something that's kind of reflected from the top or this mandate um, through, the way, through the way the org shows its values and behaviors? Um, or is this something that can bubble up from the bottom? Uh, just curious for your thoughts on, on that. So um, realistically, it has to definitely come from the top. Mm -hmm. um, but here's, here's the caveat to that. An employer who's actually listening and providing opportunities for employees to be able to bring, bring feedback and bring change to the business, it can start from the bottom too. Mm -hmm. um, but they have to create that opportunity to do so. Um, but that opportunity comes from the top where right? you've got to be able to create this opportunity where everyone from the top to the bottom can bring this and build this culture together. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, if it's not signed off by the CEO or the executive team or even mid-management, it's never going to bubble up um, from that perspective. So you have to have it from the top to the bottom to the side. Um, everyone has to be part of that to make sure that the culture goes. And one thing that you also have to understand is that as you change culture, culture, culture will inevitably um, sometimes not go the right way. Mm -hmm. You have to have um, identifiers where you can say, oh, wait, we're supposed to be going north. It looks like we're going northeast right now. How do we vary back north and make sure that we're setting ourselves, for example? So that typically comes from mid-market or the mid-management uh, mid and uh, entry-level employees because they're the ones that are they're seeing it. And you've got a lot of forums out there that will give you feedback. If it's exit interviews, there's certain websites that will give you employee feedback. Um, that you can start to identify that pretty quickly and say, okay, wait, it sounds like we're going the wrong direction. How do we get back north? And then you have to push forward to make sure where everyone's going in the right direction. I think that's a good charge for um, TD leaders listening. You know, you are, a lot of you are kind of the culture carriers, culture drivers, um, and also you're sitting in, in seats uh, of leadership to help influence folks at the top. So um, some interesting uh, ideas to keep in mind here. So Rick, as we're kind of end, uh, getting to the end of our time together, I would love to hear any final words of advice for listeners about how they can get started on this journey toward more inclusive leadership, some kind of maybe first steps. So one thing that I always recommend to clients and, and prospects of mine is be open to asking the question, are you there yet? And understand that the answer you may get may not be the answer you want to hear. Yeah. Um, and so being starting that journey saying, okay, we need to be honest with ourselves um, and ask your employees, ask their voice. You know, employee surveys are very powerful. Make sure the employees know that they can be honest and they can feel comfortable doing that. I um, mean, not everyone's going to feel that way, but it's important to, to try to gauge that and reinforce that. Um, and then once you get that feedback to really see where your pulse is at, then you need to start looking at your milestones to get you to what your end goal is and understanding what that end goal is and then getting the entire leadership team and all the employees involved and then making sure that everyone's holding each other accountable behind that. Now, that sounds easier said than done, but it is a journey. It is a step. And you may take two steps and have to take a step back and then take two more steps forward. But there's a process behind that, but you have to start with understanding where you're at realistically and then taking charge behind that. Well, thank you so much. I love starting out the the new year 2024 with this topic i think um you know becoming a more inclusive leader enabling your organization to become more inclusive in their leadership is certainly something a goal uh, a resolution however whatever you might call it um for listeners 
And I'd love before we uh, part ways, Rick, uh, you mentioned your book, you mentioned a new venture. So whatever you feel comfortable sharing or whatever you'd love for listeners to know, please tell how um, folks might connect with you uh, to ask their own questions or continue the conversation as well. Yeah, and thank you for that. And so I actually have another book coming out nice. uh, called Post Series B, the, the Millennial CEO. So I talk nice. about the journey after our Series A, which is what the first book took place in. Um, everyone can connect with me on, on LinkedIn. Um, you're going to see, I, I post a lot, I write about this a lot, actually. Um, DEI exclusively is really important to me. Um, and I, I talk about that not only from the HR lens, but the CEO lens and how to bridge the gap behind that. So. Uh, anyone can connect with me on LinkedIn. And then uh, one last spot in there, which is the uh, the new venture. Um, that new venture is going to be launching this year. Uh, definitely follow me on LinkedIn. You'll hear more about it. Can't tell you the name yet. Uh, we've got an entire person that we're pushing out for it. But I'll just say that it's revolutionary. And that is not mm-hmm. what I said. That is a quote from everyone that's involved in this project outside the company. It says, well, if we do this right, we're going to change the HR industry. So super excited to see what we're doing and how that's going to change the game. Well, that's a nice tease, Rick. So we'll we'll be staying in touch, um, keeping an eye on your LinkedIn. I, I look forward to seeing what comes out later this year. Um, thank you again so much for spending time with us today. Thank you, Anne. It was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to this podcast by the Association for Talent Development. If you found this show insightful or useful, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with a colleague.